I have a few projects that I'm working on at the moment and really should spend a lot more time working on as they've been kinda simmering in the background for a while. But I wanna talk about Pentiment right now. For those of you that don't know, I am a history major and that makes some of the jokes I try to make in my YTPs maybe make a little bit more sense as they are just seemingly random history sort of events that I decide to cover at times. Anyway, even aside from that, I'm just a huge fan of learning about history, even if I were not a history major. Just one of my favorite things to talk about in general. So, the setting of Pentiment really intrigues and excites me in that it is one of the most notoriously interesting and chaotic times in more modern history at least. That being that this takes place in Bavaria in the 1500s, early 1500s. Those of you who are familiar with that sort of timeline might be thinking, ah yes, Reformation era. The Reformation being when the Catholic Church was being challenged in a couple ways, most notably first by Martin Luther, who was a Catholic himself, and a lot of people might not get the full nuance of the story in that Martin Luther was not wanting to get rid of the Catholic Church, he just wanted to reform it because there were certain abuses of powers that were going on and he wanted them to basically reform, as the name Reformation might suggest. But it ends up creating a bunch of different reactions to what he was saying, what the Catholic Church was doing, so on and so forth, and you end up getting new churches out of it. New Christian churches end up popping up because of what Martin Luther did, and that is sort of the backdrop of what's going on in the story of Pentiment. Pentiment, I guess now that I'm thinking about it, I haven't really described what it is gameplay-wise. Being a point-and-click kind of adventure game where you're creating your character and saying, okay, my character is a artist. He's always an artist no matter what. That's the background he's given but then you get to choose other things about his background like what other European languages he is fluent in besides the local German whether he is a lawyer stu studied law a bit whether he's studied the natural world a bit whether he studied astrology and astronomy you get to choose some of his background pieces of knowledge as well and background history of traveling and stuff like that. I of course went with some of my other big interests being the natural world, being animals and such. And I figured having law as part of the background of my character as well would also maybe help out in some situations. The situations being of course getting into some spoiler territory, I do think this game probably is best played with as little knowledge of it as possible if you are interested in playing the game, so maybe some slight spoilers going ahead here, give you that spoiler warning right now. This main conflict that ends up happening in the game is that a nobleman gets killed, a nobleman that you're starting to get to know better as the game is starting out here, as well as your character getting to know better the local town that you are staying in on one of your stints in your travels to learn to become a master artist. And there, there's so many directions I can take this conversation going here, and that's why I'm probably putting this under my stream of consciousness umbrella of videos, in that Man, there's the characters to talk about, there's the setting, which I've already talked about a little bit, but it really does 
just continue to enhance what these interactions between the story elements contribute to it's it's all just great so focusing on the characters here but also on the setting because the setting makes it very important as well so characters are living in the setting of early 1500s Europe in which they've got the system of nobles and royalty and aristocrats who are in charge of the land system of Europe. But you also have the church, the church being the most powerful entity in Europe before the Reformation happens, and certainly for a time after the Reformation happens. After all, it's the Holy Roman Empire, even if not Holy Roman or an empire, as many people joke about it being that that's only partially true because they do still base a lot of their political clout in the Holy Roman Empire on the connection to the Catholic Church at least up for a good amount of time and you know this reformation is going to send all of that into whack but at the same time a lot of the power structures are going to remain the same in this weird political system even when it starts getting thrown out of whack by Martin Luther and the following people who contribute to this reformation ideas anyway. So you've got your peasants complaining about the landowners and the church and the nobles all basically stripping them of as much money as they can. Not to mention other abuses of power that the nobles or church members can inflict upon the peasantry. And this guy who comes riding in here, this noble who comes riding in here, that you, as the player character, notice a few similarities between, as this guy also seems very studied, as do you, being both at least tangentially related to the elite sort of area of society you start really having to think about okay who is someone i can trust in this game who is someone who is who is someone i want to help out in this game stuff like that and this is something i'm really loving about this game is that like a lot of good pieces of writing and fiction and such, it really helps with the world building and with the characterization if there are flaws that you can clearly see with each character. If not every character is, as is often used as a literary term, a Mary Sue, then the story becomes a lot more interesting. And that's how these characters are. You meet this noble and you're like, oh yeah, he's pretty cool, he's interested in a lot of the same stuff as I am. He he talks about Martin Luther and how his ideas are cool for reforming the church and personally yeah I agree with a lot of those myself even aside from the character inside the game but then you also hear from the peasants how this guy's a real d-bag all right he he goes around insulting other peasants he's been said to have caused peasants to lose their homes potentially even leading to the loss of life in the village in which you're staying in. So you're like, okay, maybe this guy isn't exactly great. At the very least, he's ignorant of what some of his actions do, and at worst, he might be okay with this stuff and know about this stuff that he's doing, but be like, eh, I'm a noble, it's all part of the job, you know. Then you got the church, and... Just because of my knowledge of history and stuff, I was, of course, skeptical of the church and how well it was doing in terms of interacting with the local population myself. And the game supports the idea a little bit by the peasants complaining about how the church is treating the town already, not to mention you got people in the town that cling to more of the pagan ways the the myths and beliefs about their way of life before christianity became more entrenched and even the ideas which 
connected Christianity to their pagan beliefs as well, as that was one way that Christianity was able to spread so well throughout the world, is that sometimes pagan beliefs would be sanctified, would be turned into saints, so that local legends would be more accepting of Christianity, and it could slowly over time be kind of integrated into these societies, even though people might have been like, no, we don't want Christianity, we want our myths. It was just one way in which Christianity, as, long as, as well as other religions like Islam and such, were able to spread so well throughout the world. But the church also has some elements about it that are likable. Like, for instance, Piero, the, one of the workers at this monastery, who your character clearly has a very good relationship, and this monk also just happens to have a good relationship with basically everyone. Not, not anyone looks down on him, but he ends up being accused of the murder of this noble when that murder happens, because he is in the room, he found the body, he has a knife in his hand, which was involved with the murder of this guy. And your character's like, this this is an old man who could not have done this physically or mentally because you know how nice he is and everyone knows how nice he is but regardless he's put up as the main suspect because there's no other real clear suspect at the time and that becomes a mystery finding thing you have to try to find evidence to help clear Piero's name and you basically get a list of a few suspects that you can spend time in the day becomes kind of a time management thing trying to figure out who's the most likely to have done this and if you spend enough time in any one of these places you'll be able to get enough evidence to convict at least one of these suspects that you find out i'm not sure if any of these suspects are actually the killer though as all of them do seem to have some sort of set of circumstances that make it so okay yeah this guy probably didn't do it but nonetheless you don't want Piero to die so you're trying as hard as you can to get one of them convicted and you just keep looking for something that suggests okay yeah this this looks pretty sus this guy might have done it actually so someone got convicted after I presented what I had to present after these couple days of finding evidence at the trial and they get executed and they are the person I ended up convicting as he's being brought out to the chopping block even though there wasn't a block there like in Skyrim it was kind of just they set up in the middle of town without a chopping block but they had their executioner anyway uh yeah I'm certain this guy didn't actually do it now and I'm just like oh thank goodness that the game gives you an option to turn away from this because I am not about this I can only assume it would be a similar story for any of the people you convicted because I don't know how the story would continue otherwise because I thought this was the end of the game at first as well it's like oh well you can keep redoing this game and then see what happens if you get somebody else convicted see how the story changes stuff like that but no the game continues seven years later after you become a master artist and you have a apprentice following you now and you have to figure out the loose ends of what was happening after this murder that took place seven years ago and now certain parts of the town hate you more than others because of who you got convicted in this case the church hated me more because oh look now uh, you, you got our friar killed back then and now we're, you're not welcome here except you are kind of welcome here because we want to sell some books because the church is low on money and that's another part of the conflict too is just like Everybody's like, oh, we're so low on money. The church is low on money. The peasants are low on money because the church and the grain miller are sucking them of wealth. And the church probably can't ask for money from the Holy Roman Empire because all these wars are taking place because of, well, the divisions over Christianity and such. And it's like, yeah, you, you certainly feel worse for certain parts of the populace, though. Especially the... The, pe the peasantry, of course, you're supposed to feel the worst for. And I do feel the worst for, definitely. <laughs> and that's something interesting I find about the game, too, is that... I have my clear convictions as a person outside of the game. But the game is 
quick to always remind you each side of the story. And even if you yourself have a definite idea of like, okay, no, this is the lesser of two evils, or this is clearly what needs to be solved here, just do, just solve this. It does make it a bit more realistic in that it can't just be solved immediately like that, and also is a good exercise in empathy and recognizing all of what's going on at once and what's going on at all at once in other people's heads and feelings. It still does make it a little bit frustrating when you want to say something a lot different than what your player character is saying during the dialogue that happens and the dialogue choices that you have, but hey, this is the same studio that made Fallout New Vegas, so in some ways it's charming and funny in that way, but it's also in some ways maybe kind of realistic, but still frustrating because no, I wanted to say this in a bit more nuanced of a way, a bit more, you know, not trying to get people on the bad side kind of way. And speaking of getting people on your bad side, at that trial thing you can accuse multiple people and depending on how much evidence it, you have of it, that's how likely it'll be they'll be arrested and such and then convicted of the crime of murdering the noble. If you accuse them in any sort of way and try to put forth any sort of way, this will be remembered. There's a lot of dialogue options throughout the game where this will be remembered. I don't think it actually said this will be remembered during this trial except if you were talking directly to the noble and like saying stuff directly about the nobles who are conducting the trial. Like yeah sure the nobles are gonna remember if I say something a little off color about the nobles. Yeah that makes sense. But if you accuse say one of the local townspeople you know oh, like uh, may maybe they did the murder too like i have a little bit of evidence on them they were acting kind of sus they're gonna remember that seven years later when you come back to town and they're like hey uh, i have not forgotten how you put me up as one of the murderers here and i'm like oh oh no i am terrified now that this guy's gonna come murder me in my sleep all right um makes sense of course but also like Wait, the church told everyone who told who about what now? What is, what is going on? Oh, crap. Or not the church, the people who are conducting the trial. You know what I mean. There's just so much about the world building and characterization and just all of that that I'm loving about this game. And that's why I wanted to talk about it here for a bit. Since I'm, I'm currently still playing through a bit of it. I got a bunch of time recently on my hands to play through more of it and... Despite also wanting to play through like 12 other games at the moment and wanting to spend pretty much all of my time doing that and making YTPs and other video projects that I have in mind. I've just really been loving what I've seen so far in Pentiment and wanted to put out a little bit of a stream of consciousness piece talking about it a little bit here. If you haven't, definitely try Pentiment. It's definitely a slow paced game, it's not an action game, it's very heavily story based and careful decision making based and a lot of those careful decisions might not go the way you want definitely won't go the way you want I think but that does make the story still super endearing even if it's like oh man I because in a lot of ways yeah it does reflect some aspects of life of there's no easy way out of a lot of stuff you can't talk your way out of everything you can't dip diplomat your way out of everything you cannot roll nat 20s on your diplo roll every single time but yeah it, it really does hit a good balance of okay i definitely have some control of what's going on here but also i can i can see how no matter how i answer this question this person's not going to be pleased probably there's a there's a bit more stuff I could probably talk about here, but I don't want to keep this going too long. I just really wanted to give a bit of praise that through the seven or so hours I've been through Pentiment so far. It's been really cool with the setting, what you learn about the characters over time, and just how lived in the world feels and how easily it just all brings everything together it's 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 lovely stuff and the art being 
reminiscent of the manuscripts of the time just it was a really cool idea all around this game and i'm excited to play more of it as i go through here 